wild times. Woo! Here we go. Wild times, episode number 127. 127 fantastic Brutal hours. weeks with you. Oh. Hard, hard years. Hard as years. Has lived. Uh, I am your host, Forrest Galante, the broologist, cracking my delightful fat tire here, keeping it nice and cool into my cozy because it is hot nice. outside. And uh, joining me is the effervescent, the lovely lit Patrick DeLuca, the spiceman, the bro producer, mm. who's quite sick by the sounds of things. How are you, sir? Great, minus that. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it's. It's what everyone has always told me is like, get your kid in preschool. You're just going to be sick for a year. Yeah. And it's been true. It's been true Correct. for the first two months. So uh, yep. uh, yeah. Enjoy. Hellish. Enjoy that. Yeah. And that'll be great yeah. when the second one comes around and then the baby's sick too. And yes. uh, in addition to Papa P himself, we have the PhD in podcasting, the profe No, what are you? Professional? What are you? Professor. Professor, that's what it is. Weird. My said a brain fart. The professor. Okay. <laughs> What's up, Peter? How are you? I'm a little disappointed. I didn't get a compliment or adjective like. Oh shit! I meant to do that too. I meant, I, I meant to come one. up with some funny words for you too, and I forgot. Oh, sorry. Well, Peter's okay. very lovely. Peter's lovely. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I'm I'm doing well. I'm drinking uh, my irrit taff or fat tire. If you read backwards, it's uh, hot. You've got a koozie it today. It's hot out. <clears throat> It's super yeah. hot. I mean, I'm going to koozie it every day. Uh, excited to be here. Happy. Um, Pat, I, I love your hair. It's great. I, I think you look very effervescent. And, uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> All right. Well, there's lots of good stuff going on. I got really excited when I read producer Edwin's show doc. Can I get into something I'm very excited about? Can I get right into, into a little segment we call What's in the News? Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> All right, what's in the news? This one went viral all over the place uh, when it came out just about a week ago. For the first time since 1972, a rare spotless giraffe was seen. But, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, born on July 31st, this was not in the Serengeti. This was not somewhere in the middle of Africa. This was in Tennessee. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know that drafts were native to Tennessee. They're not, but at the uh, Bright Zoo in Limestone, Tennessee, on July 31st, a baby giraffe was born, an incredibly rare, uh, like one in a million. This was a spotless baby giraffe. The last one was recorded in 1972, also in a zoo in Tokyo. And uh, it's just an incredibly unique and interesting thing to see. Now, what's funny is, if giraffes didn't regularly have spots, you'd be like, oh, that's a pretty bland animal. And if one was born with <laughs> spots, you'd be like, wow, yeah. that's incredible. But now it just For looks sure. like now it just looks like a weird camel. But anyway. Uh, well, so I, I have a quick question. I, yeah. I feel like I recall learning about something. They used giraffes as a genetic example of something when I was in grade school. Oh, it wasn't. Was it the spots? What's what's up with the now the spots? Do they give them some type of uh, advantage or what's up with the spots on a giraffe? Look at that adorable thing. Um, it's Very camouflage. Cute. Just like everything okay. in Africa, it's, it's built in camouflage. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know what you're referring to that you. I think about. it's the neck. The neck is what I'm referring to. I just remembered. Well, you know, what's they're, interesting they're, about the neck. What? They have the same number of vertebrae that we do. Just really long. Vertebrae. Yeah, just big. Isn't that interesting? That's wild. Um, but anyway, yeah, this beautiful spotless giraffe was born. I thought it was really cool. It's an absolute anomaly to see one like this. Um, there was an interesting thing in 2020. I don't know if you guys remember when this came out. It was right before we started. I don't think we ever talked about it in the wild times, but there was an old white giraffe that was spotted in Kenya. So you get these like genetic anomalies, you know, with uh, what do you call it? It's like melanism and albinism and leucism and all of that where these giraffes look really really different but there's a i don't know if kyle can find the pic there's an incredible rare white one um that uh that it, was around in a zoo and, no no, no this almost... was in in africa um in uh, Kenya. okay so that was pretty pretty cool and then there's this one with the spotless i don't know i just like all these different uh giraffes so it's they, always... say the, they say the dark spots um also are part of their cooling mechanism 
that, oh. that those dark spots have uh like a really dense concentration of blood vessels and uh mm. so that somehow allows them to cool themselves off so do you think hmm. do you think this fully brown one is just going to be like shivering <laughs> <laughs> good question um wait to cool themselves right so you're saying without the white so the whole body would be covered in that cooling thing yeah well, Blood I think vessels. he lives in Tennessee, right? Um, gets pretty <laughs> toasty there. Um, I don't know. That's interesting. I didn't know about that. Um, but the it's white just cool. one, beautiful. The white one that Kyle just brought up is is like extra cool. Did you guys uh, see that one? Yeah, Crazy. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So that I one's going to be very hot. Just the yep. white one, apparently. When did that Which you think would be the? It should be the opposite, right? Because you know, right. like black attracts heat. Like if you're wearing a dark T-shirt outside, it's miserable. And you wear a white yeah. shirt and you're like, yeah, I don't even feel the sun. You'd think a white giraffe would feel a lot cooler than a darker colored browner giraffe, but I guess not. Do you think the other giraffes like kind of shun the spotless Definitely. giraffes? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think a in a zoo, bringing. I don't think in a zoo setting, because in a zoo setting, there's like no alternative. But in the wild, yeah. that sort of survival of the fittest would kick in and, you know, Anything that's an anomaly stands out. I think when November 2020, when the white giraffe thing uh, came up, everybody thought he was going to die immediately. In fact, Kyle, you might be able to find this. They first spotted the white giraffe as a baby, probably probably six months or so before that, in the Masai Mara. And they're like, oh, this giraffe will never make it to adulthood because he's bright white. Every lion in the Serengeti is going to see him. You know, he'll be he'll be picked off in no time. And then six months later, some tourists were on safari and there was a 14 foot tall white giraffe and they're like, oh, wait a minute. And he just grew up and he like made it, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy because sticks out like a sore ass thumb. That's like a small polar bear walking around a small 20 foot tall polar bear walking around in the, in Africa. Can exactly. I break some news? <clears throat> break yeah, some sure. news. Breaking news came out yesterday. Kyle, pull this up. Another yeah. spotless giraffe baby has just been spotted as of no. yesterday. In no, the wild this up. time. You're making this in up. In the wild. Holy what? shit. Yeah. What's oh, going look at that. on here? In Namibia. Huh. That is crazy. Something is happening, dude. This is aliens for sure. <laughs> this is aliens. <laughs> this, this literally just broke yesterday. Giraffe spots is aliens. Um, uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Huh. I wonder if it's something to do with like the climate or something, you know, something that we're, we're not understanding. Could be. Huh. Now, if you were, if you were like on a bush track and you saw that, would you like, what would your reaction be? I'd be would shocked. Be like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. if I didn't know about this, which I only really knew that it became a thing, you know, when that white giraffe came out, but I guess that's albinism. I don't know. I'd just be shocked. I'd be, it'd be one of those things where I wouldn't really believe my own eyes. I'd be like, I swear to God, I saw this fully brown giraffe and I'd Full probably brown. be justifying it. I'd be like, oh, he was probably just rolling in the dust or something. Like, there's no way it was actually brown, like all over. You know, I'd be like justifying yeah. it in my own mind for why I thought that. Um, so the Tennessee Zoo has narrowed down to four names. Um, I don't think it's up for vote, but Forrest, I'm going to give you the ability to choose which of these okay. four names they're going to name the fully brown giraffe. Okay. Kapiki, Furyali, Shakiri or Jamela? Oh, it's definitely Kapiki. Yeah, Kapiki's. It's, it's, it's the only. Such it's the only. No yeah, it's the only cute name. What was the last one? Shirelli. What was that? <laughs> Jamela. Jamelli. Jamelli. Jamela. That's awful. What a mess. It's just a bunch of letters. Um, no, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care for that one bit. Um, anyway, just like that bit of news. Uh, I've got another one. If we want to keep going yeah. on news, what do you got, baby? Going. I'm ready. Did I tell you guys this? I'm I'm, I'm mixing up. My DFS game this year for mm. football. You're, you're paint, paint your body, eat a lot more hot wings, or what do you think? I'm going to eat a lot of hot wings. Um, yeah. I'm not going to paint my my gross body. Uh, no, <laughs> prize picks. Have you heard about this? I'm familiar with it a little bit. Never played it. How's it work? My buddies are doing it. It's the easiest way to play DFS, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, all you do is you go on. They posted a bunch of stats. Right, like uh -huh. more or less receiving yards. Oh, will will simple. Bryce Young have 189.5 more or less passing yards? Right, I'm going less this week. Less, less yeah. for sure. Yeah. So you pick anywhere from two to six, uh, more or less. 
Mm -hmm. You pick anywhere from two to six of those. You can turn ten dollars into two hundred and fifty bucks with just a few taps. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty fun. It's very simple to play. You make your picks. You can submit your entry in less than sixty seconds. I think it's perfect for our busy, busy audience who are out there catching snakes, collecting tadpoles. And playing a lot of fantasy, quite frankly. You're in the league. I mean, I'm in. I think it sounds great. Let's do it. Yeah. If you're interested, it is fun. Go to prizepicks.com slash wild and use code wild for a first deposit match up to $100 at Prize Picks. Daily fantasy sports made easy. I think it's a great idea. Forrest, you should do it right now. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging up and going over there as we speak. We'll, we'll wait while you do that. All right, but good, goodbye. I got another one. This is a fantastic find. Very exciting. A <laughs> new, anytime that anything new comes out in the wild world, especially when it's not like a microscopic insect, is very exciting. Scientists discovered a new species of shark. Um, and it's not just any shark. It's not just some tiny deep sea shark. It's a horn Maybe. shark, which are very cool. We have them here in, in California. But this is a painted horn shark from Western Australia. It's uh, oh, let's Cal have a look at this thing. There. Yeah, it's beautiful looking animal. Look oh, at wow. that thing. Wow, yeah. it looks like is that like a like a tiger shark, right? A little bit, or am I crazy? I mean, patterning, yeah, patterning wise, it's it sort of has that tiger shark pattern esque. But see why it's called the horn shark. Kyle, zoom into on top of the dorsal either dorsal fin there. Um, they have these these oh. uh, spikes that stick out by their their fin there to keep predators mm. from biting them. That actually have a toxin in them. They're pretty brutal. I've been been. Tagged by him a few times, catch hand catching him in California. Um, but yeah, really cool. Just just a, <laughs> just a few <laughs> weeks ago, it was discovered during a seabed survey in Gascoigne Marine Park, um, which was you know just awesome to find a new species of shark. And it is pretty deep, which especially for horn sharks in the rest. As far as I know, the rest of the other species of horn shark are all pretty shallow, like reef species. This guy was found from like 400 to, to like 750 feet down. So it is relatively deep, not crazy deep, but mm. just, uh, yeah, really cool. How, how far does a uh, diver go down? Like a, uh, well, when you dive, like when you go di diving down to either spearfish like one, or. Uh, free diving, I'll, I'll, hunt, I'll hunt down to typically about 100, holding my breath, and then scuba mm. diving down to like 160. Now, you can go down deeper. I mean, there are guys that will go all the way down to basically 350, 400 feet with special tanks and deco and everything else. But, you know, the the upper limit of how deep you can go scuba diving is basically called 200 feet. It's it's crazy because when I go head first down into like an eight foot pool, my head feels like it's going to explode. So it's well, you have the to pressure clear your down. ears. You have to clear no, your ears. No, it's, it's not just my ears. It's everything. It just feels like it's all getting compressed so much. <laughs> and when you say clear your ears, you mean like do the Valsalva maneuver where you go blow out when you hold your nose? I've never heard the, of the Valsalva maneuver. But yeah, yeah just what, what, what's like that? that. Unblock your ears, you know, like you do on yeah, an airplane. So, so that it's it's called the uh, Valsalva maneuver when you hold your nose and you blow. And, and uh, Force is calling it clearing your ears. It's the same thing, I think. So apparently this horn shark has some very strange teeth. Yeah, it's got molars. Yeah, they're, they're saying it has human-like molars. Look at oh this. Oh, my goodness. Let's see this. So see those, those oh my God. teeth in the back? It's got yeah. The top. Those flat, bony molars there. Yeah. Chewing Rad. on some mollusks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's eating seaweed, dude. That's what the molars are for. <laughs> molars. Uh, molars. Yeah, well, that's what I got for what's in the news. I was stoked on both of those. Love the new horn shark. I love that he's striped. I think he's beautiful. It's very cool. I liked the uh, the video that was sent of the orangutan just gunning the possum out of its enclosure. Oh, oh so what? Good. I haven't seen this. Oh, dude, this, this orangutan, he's, he's cruising around. He's at a zoo. He goes up into his house, <laughs> and it's like, you know, he's got like a little tree house, like four watch this oh my what god what the <laughs> it'll replay <laughs> <It's> good <laughs> wait yeah. i want to see it for the beginning oh That's there it. isn't a beginning so you just yeah. see him flinging it out of there yeah oh my goodness yeah it's at the perth zoo in australia and the uh <laughs> the zookeepers were like we we actually do a really good job with pest control but 
every <laughs> once, once in a while, the uh, orangutans have to let a possum go flying. And there's no, <laughs> no, they provided no update about the condition of the possum. He there's didn't no make way. it. No, he there's no way. There's no, let no me way. see that again. Pull that up one more time. <laughs> so funny. That's like, yeah, that's like 30 feet in the air. Oh, yeah. No, he is flying. Dude, the no. distance is amazing because you can tell he just grabbed it and just flung it. And it goes like 40 yards. The the reason I like the first comments is I'm so conflicted if I find this funny or not. Uh, yeah. The reason <laughs> that the uh, there's no update on the possum is because the orangutan flipped him into the crocodile enclosure. So yeah. that was uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm just is that true? Up, but no, I don't oh. know. But it, he's definitely not still in the orangutan house. I mean, he is flying he's just, out of there. He's, he's probably been talking to the crocodile over there and like they planned this for sure. He's like this goddamn possum keeps coming up. I'm gonna toss him over to you. You you catch him. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome good stuff well i mean have what's been going on in life uh forest or have you been able you, you did you uh you watch the uh world series of rugby was it you uh said it was the world get cup crazy the world cup's ongoing uh games so far have been really good the uh fiji wales game was fantastic i mean fiji was way down and then they had they had an opportunity right at the 80th minute to come back and the guy on the wing dropped the ball at the try line. And it was like he, he literally put his head down and didn't pick it up. Like even after he put a towel over his head, he was so was gutted. Staying. But the games have been yeah. amazing. Yeah, they've been super physical. There's been some awesome, awesome rugby going on. The game on September 24th is going to be the best game uh, of probably the whole tournament, which is Ireland against South Africa. That's basically like a final. So that'll nice. be a really good game. Important game to see if the Springboks move forward. So. Yeah, I'm gonna have and, to. I'm gonna have to give it a watch because Forrest, you don't you you don't watch many sports. You're like me, right? You're just into rugby pretty much, and then animals. yeah, it's my only sport. I mean, yeah, I'll you know, look, I'll I'll watch a Super Bowl when it's on, or you right, know, go right. to a baseball game with some buddies. But I am the I'm fanatical about rugby. I can name every player on every team. I this is this is my holy grail of sports. I spend four years waiting for this, seeing what team is playing who and who's injured and what the yeah. rankings are and yeah, no, I love, 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 love rugby. So, well, we yeah, had, we had, an exciting. we had an interesting question come in. Uh, I think it was on the Patreon and somebody asked who, what seven animals I believe would you have on your rugby team to, uh, Oh, I, I texted you guys the answer. I just don't remember what I said. Um, uh, so I think it's in the chat we had, if you want to refresh back, but, um, I you you did send a list of animals, but I was wondering like why because I know nothing about rugby and I want to I wanted to know why you picked the animals you did. Yeah, uh, so sevens rugby is different from fifteens rugby. That's not what's happening right now. Sevens rugby is a smaller, faster game. Four seven minutes per half, fourteen minute game total. It's what I played in two two weeks ago when I blew up my knee a little bit, and uh, it's all open field, fast paced running. Um, so okay. I said I do uh, – my front row would be an elephant, rhino, elephant, which are all fast, big animals. So you could always offload to any of those animals, and they'd smash it through. Then I'd have my scrum half being a pronghorn antelope because they're just, like, super bouncy and maneuverable. So they can bounce oh, around nice. the scrum, get the ball, yeah. offload it. My uh -huh. uh, my number five would be an ostrich because really good in a straight line, going to run the ball up hard, still has some good steps, great speed. And then on the wings, I'd have cheetahs. So they're just, they're just, oh yeah. Little Ches Cheslin Colby's, which I'm sure you, nobody who's listening even knows who that is, but <laughs> no. um, he's an incredible, he's one of the best athletes you will ever see in your life. Um, and yeah. just hand the ball out to the wings and uh, have them burn it in. So anyway, I could do a Sounds whole like a podcast good on rugby, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot going on. The World Cup's so exciting. It's so much fun. Is New Zealand still in it? They're in it, but they're 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 dog shit. I mean, the standings are unbelievable. <laughs> like it's just like first of all, I mean, you saw what Rhodes said, but uh, first of all, uh, yeah, no, the the All Blacks are just utter garbage at the moment. England is terrible. Australia, I think, is ranked ninth, which is insane. These are all teams that have won the World Cup prior. So right oh. now, Ireland is standing as number one, and South Africa is seated as number two, even though South Africa is the reigning world champs. Um, but in the point system, Ireland is ranked above them by one point at the number one seed, and they're in the same pool in pool play, which that's why I'm saying huh. the game on September 24th is going to be like a final because you're watching the world number one and number two team play before even the playoffs or before oh. even the, the semifinals. So it's um, 
I don't know. It's really it's the, gonna be a betting South- odds. <laughs> the betting odds have shifted a lot since we talked about it. South Africa is now the favorite. I told you that before we read the odds. I was like, I guarantee you South Africa is the, and whoever said New Zealand. So I mean, those are odds from people that obviously, especially if they're Vegas odds, don't understand rugby. They're basing it on Vegas history. Odds. Well, you should take advantage of it then, pal. Because it's true. Ireland is still behind New Zealand here. Who is? Ireland. So it goes South Africa and France at the top, then a no, gap. That's dumb. Then that's New really Zealand dumb. again. <laughs> So they're, they're, they're basing that on the fact that Ireland's never won a World Cup. But if you look at the players, you look at the coaches, you look at the style of play and the teams that have been built. I wish I, I don't know how to fucking sports bet, but I would have told, I would have bet easily a thousand dollars that New Zealand was going to lose. You're talking to the gambling man, Pat, right here, dude. You should hook up, link up, put it in a nice I'll, bet. I'll give you, I'll give you some money to play some bets, Pat. I, I, it's like, well, who do you, who, who do you think is going to win? It's South either going to be, well, the South African South Africa is going to win the World Cup. That's 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 what I say going into every World Cup. It's who I want to win every World Cup. That's my team. The game against Ireland is probably going to be the best game of the whole tournament, even though it's not in the in the finals or semis. The next best game will probably be the finals game, which is either going to be Ireland versus France or yeah. or South Africa versus France. Now. I'm obviously rooting for it's South Africa versus France because South Africa plays a much more physically dominant game than France does. And uh, yeah. that's, that's if we face France, we'll annihilate them. When we face Ireland, <laughs> it's big farm boys versus big farm boys. So that game is yeah, going to be. Yeah, baby. Now, the good I thing mean... about that is, the good thing about that is South Africa, South Africans are just a shitload harder than uh irish so we're still gonna smash the shit oh, out of man them. you are causing some, oh, some I don't turbulence here people are getting I don't, pissed don't care one bit um but it's <laughs> he wants uh to fight all the irish listeners oh right now i'll fight every single one of them we're talking about <laughs> rugby if you put me in a bar right now and there was a game going on i'd be screaming in people's faces trying to start something i listen um, i gotta i want i gotta go I, and see this game with you i want to see this debauchery that happens like I, I feel like it'll be nothing like i've ever experienced you at oh, a bar well, with wait, all these rugby wait dudes. until 20 20- 30, I think it is when the rugby <laughs> world cup comes to the USA. Cause I'm going to oh, every boy. single game. Where and I, do you I'm, know where it's going to be? Uh, they haven't announced yet. It's either going to be uh, just, well, it's not one place. It's all over the country. Just like right now mm. it's in France and it's, it's in like six different stadiums. Um, gotcha. but I'm going to go to literally every game unless they decide to do Canada, USA and Mexico, which they're discussing, which would be a pain. But, um, no, I literally like, I will, go in full South Africa garb. And if I see a fan for England, <laughs> New Zealand, Australia, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, I'll just be screaming in their faces about what cool, clownish, useless players and coaches they have until somebody punches me. That's like my favorite thing to do. Uh, <laughs> for, Forrest might be more passionate about rugby than he is animals, which is, which is a hard trick to beat. Cause I like I've my rugby. Met anyone. <laughs> I like my well, rugby. Speaking of speaking of games, I know, Pre pod, we were talking about some games and shit that uh, that we have going on. You were real excited about some kind of game you wanted to play for Host. Oh yeah, I got a good one. Um, stand by one second. I got to pull it up here. So this was submitted to me by a Brosner. It was an idea that I got sent, and I was like, "Wow, that actually sounds really, really fun." Um, nice. Let me find it here. That All right, here it sense. is. It is from Miles Hardake. Is that right? Am I saying that right? Miles Heartache. I, I love you. He's correct. a heartbreak kid. Heartache. Yeah. So Miles sent this in, and he had a game that he came up with. Stand by. Miles got some cool photos. Hold on a second. Can we show people's Instagram on 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 this? Is that a thing we yeah. can do? You got to okay. throw it, Hold I think, on. in the private chat so he can. All right. So real quick, Kyle, pull up Miles' page. I, I haven't looked at it until right this second. I just read the DM, but he's got some good shit on here. Look at the Miles' page. Stand by. Pull this up. Kyle, show show the show the people. Look at the Miles' photos here. Let the good Miles is not see. fucking around. Look at his, his stingray shots real nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is legit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, this, these look like professional photogs right here. Look at that line. Yeah, these are good. Um, all right. Anyway, well, Miles came up with a game, and we're going to play it. Uh, he calls it highs or lows. So we're going to come up with... Uh, I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you a stat, which in this case, we're going to do populations left in the wild. And you guys are going to guess 
who's got more or less, and then I'll give you the numbers. Okay. Okay. Does that All make right. sense? Real simple. So highs or lows, brosters, play along. So first up, we have the Asian elephant, ver- elephant uh, versus <laughs> the African lion. Um, Asian elephant versus African lion. Who has a higher population left in the wild? And what do you think those numbers are? Wow. E- easy for me. I'd say African lion. Um, I'm going to guess 4,000. Okay. Uh, I, I got to go with the African lion too. Reason being is that I know that elephants have been poached and hunted for their tusks to the point where they're now literally devolving tusks. So true. Um, I'm going to go with the lion. I'm going to go a little okay. less though. I'm going to go with 2,800 lions left. Jeez, you guys are, your populations are grim. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, really? So keep in it's mind good, in Asia, elephants are used as a commodity. They're used for work and everything else. So they keep that population nice and healthy. So there are oh. 50,000 Asian elephants left in the wild wow. and only 24,000 African lions left in the wild. Which is a lot better than four, like you guys are saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's good like and bad. You're really happy now. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Okay. And Cal, I, I can't see because I'm reading the, the game, but hopefully you're pulling up pictures of everything so we can see them because we're going to get into some uh, more unique critters in a minute here. Okay. Next up, round two Sloth Bear versus Striped Hyena. Which one do you think has a higher population? Tell me a little bit about the Sloth Bear. I don't know. I don't know much about it. Um, sloth bear is an amazing creature from Asia. Let me pull up. I'm hoping Kyle can pull up. Um, yeah, some... you got a picture up here. Okay. Interesting. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's probably the number one animal I wanted to see outside of the gharial when we went to India, because in the parks we were in, they had them, didn't get to see them. Uh, apparently incredibly aggressive, like way more aggressive than Ooh. a grizzly or anything else. And they're not nearly as big, much smaller animal. Um, but yeah, they, they'll defend themselves against tigers in India and other parts of Asia. The guides we were with, wow. I think I told the story. Uh, yeah, I did tell the story. The guides we were with when we were in Nepal, they came rushing into the hut and like locked the door. And I was like, what is going on? They're like, we just saw a sloth bear on the trail. And I was like, fuck. And like got all excited and like was trying <laughs> to run out. And they're like, don't go out there. Don't go out there. And they were like dead serious <laughs> that if I just like was outside around a sloth bear, it would rip me to shreds. And wow. I, was, you know. I've multiple times I've been in Alaska and somebody's been like grizzly and I've gone sprinting out to see the grizzly from a safe distance. But these guys were like, no, no, you can't even like be anywhere near a sloth barrel or rip you to shreds. Can um, we just digress for a, a half a second here? Look at, of course, somebody, some photographer captured a sloth bear versus tiger battle in a series of photos. It's pretty unbelievable. Oh, I want to see him. I mean, the wow. sloth bear does not have the size advantage here. Look no. at that. Zoom in, Kyle, real quick on that second yeah. photo down. Zoom that in on the bear's one. face there. Vicious, Look at that. man. Looks that like looks that like that Charlie. werewolf that Joe Rogan has in his studio. That's exactly <laughs> what it looks like. That is exactly what it looks like. That's and a little there guy. It looks cuddly. Yeah. And there it looks cute. They look like they're about to go for a French kiss. <clears throat> Wait, yeah. so, so is this a full-size one or is this like a baby one? No, it's full-size. Oh, my God. Dude, that thing tigers is... are, remember, tigers are massive. That's true, Massive. I guess. Yeah, for dude, these things are badass. Okay, what's your okay, so, what so you sloth pay? bear versus what's the other one? Striped striped hyena. hyena. So Kyle, if you'll pull up a picture of a striped hyena, uh, we actually got really really great trail cam footage of a striped hyena uh, during the Zimbabwe uh, cool. main lion or not main lion uh, Cape lion episode. Yeah, uh, hmm. and got. Incredible footage of one. But uh, anyway, what do you think? They live in sub-Saharan Africa, of course. Who do you think has a higher wild population? Striped hyenas have the higher population. Uh, now that I know what I know about the lion, I'm going to say striped hyenas coming in around 46,000. Okay. Peter? Uh, wow. I mean... Just to play devil's advocate, I'll I'll go with the uh, sloth bear, even though I don't really believe it. I'll say population fifty thousand. <laughs> you just don't believe it exists. No, I I don't no. I don't believe that it has a higher population. Good. But I, I just want to go against the grain here. Fifty thousand. Right, before before I give the answer, would you guys like to see my super cool new discus? Look at him back there. So is that the big two... yellowfish? 
Yeah, and then there's the blood discus as well, which I don't know, Kyle. I don't know if you can zoom in, but they're uh, they're together. He's behind the yellow fish, but um, no, they're. Kyle, can you hack cool. into Forrest's webcam and zoom it in, please? Yeah, just, <laughs> it perfect. Yeah, I got two beautiful discus. Um, you know, it's hilarious. They're out huh? right now. Is nice. They're hiding. Oh, look, you can see the blue one nicely now. See him? Oh, down at the bottom right there. He's right there. Oh shit! Yeah, that's a that's a reflection. <laughs> that's a reflection. No, right there. There's a fish. No, no, I right? see him now. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. bottom right was a reflection. Oh, well, he's very cool. Um, all right, all right back to the game. Got? Who wins? Uh, the so I said fifty thousand. Yeah, for the, the uh, bear. The sloth bear has a population of about twenty thousand individuals in the wild, whereas <sighs> the striped hyena only has fourteen thousand. Oh, baby! Come on. That's right. So. So we got one point for Peter so far. Um, all right, next up, uh, we both know what these animals look like. We have the gray wolf or the brown bear. Who do you think has a higher population oh, wow. in the wild? Well, wow. I, I didn't know like any of these, by the way. I was just like, oh, yeah, I sort of have an idea of like what their numbers or what their population is doing as far as whether it's surviving or dwindling. But I didn't know any of these right. like actual stats. So it's kind of cool. Like brown bear, gray wolf, they coexist in the same habitat. I know what I thought first off. I was like, oh, this is going to be obvious, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. This is a tough one. I, to me, this one seems very obvious, okay. but I've been wrong on everyone so far. So I'm going to go <laughs> brown bear. Are we going worldwide population? Correct. No, oh, man. I mean, there's still plenty in Russia, Siberia. I'm going to go like 250,000 brown bear left. I think okay. they're doing great. Okay. Um, shit. I, I, I'm going to go with the brown bear as well. The gray wolf gets hunted out of places. I mean, there, ha I'm going to, I'm going to go a little lower though. I'll say 180,000 brown bear. Okay. Well, the brown bear, as you both guessed, has a population of 200,000 worldwide. Whereas the gray wolf has a population of 300,000. Wow. What? Yeah. But they're That's pack crazy. animals. That's why, to me, it was like pretty obvious. It's like, oh, well, there's these oh, packs yeah. of wolves, right? And so you have a pack mm. of them that's going to account for more than the individual brown bears that are spread out all wow. over the place. So, um, all right, we I, got two more I, game. If we like this game, uh, I like this game. I like this. It's it. pretty fun. Yeah, it's pretty I, fun. I a, Miles can Miles has offered to do a bunch more. He actually sent me two, so we could even do another one today, or we can save it for another day. Hey, Brosters, thank you for being loyal subscribers. We appreciate everything that you do. And now we have a membership offer for you. I think you can get ad-free episodes, I heard. That's pretty big. Ad-free is big, but you can also get your comments looked at so we don't have to sift through the millions. How do you do that? There. Is there some sort of badge system? There's a badge system, <laughs> a loyalty badge. Boom. Shows up next to your name in the comments. Boom. Oh, we man. read the comment. All this badge talks. Make, I'm going to the badge store. He's going to You're get a badger. badger. He's going he's gonna to buy one. Didn't earn it. He's going to buy one. He did a fake leave. <laughs> well, I assumed Kyle would know to cut it. on the motion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's cut now. That's, that's our ad. I have an interesting question you may or may not know, but if you don't know, maybe Kyle can find out. What is the number of animals that you need to have in a population to be considered endangered, for example? I know they have different levels, but like, is it when it's down to like 3,000 or is there not a set number? For critically endangered? It doesn't matter. Whatever. I, I'm just trying to get a frame of reference. Like, it. Well, that's interesting. To, Kyle, look it up. I'm not sure. Because it's different. You know, there's a, a whole lot of different uh, specifications. Wow. But uh, critically endangered is when there's less than 250 breeding adults left. That's critically endangered. Okay. So 250. That's low. That, and basically, it doesn't really even mean that, to be honest, because what it really means is critically endangered means that it has a most, I think it's like greater than 50% chance of going extinct without intervention in 20 years or less. That's actually what oh. it is. Because, so you you know, you can have a population of, and this is why it's so different, right? You can have a population of 250 animals and be like, oh, they'll be fine because they're super fine. You know, like if you had a population of 250 Dorado, they'd be fine because they reach adulthood in three months and they can, mm. you know, make 10,000 babies. Whereas a population of 250 uh, orangutan, gorilla, elephants, any of these slow reproducing like big whales, they're pretty much fucked. They're just slowly going to dwindle from there because that capacity is not enough for them to 
to generationally continue at a fast enough rate. So um, okay. pro probability of extinction is 20% uh, within 20 years or five generations. That's critically endangered. Okay. Um, so probability of extinction in the wild in at least in, is at least 20% within 20 years. That's, that's how they define critical endangered. Gotcha. And then endangered, it says, according to National Geographic Society, if the population decreases by 20% within a five year period. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. See, okay. See, it's all and, over the place. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. It's, it's not like yeah. they're, it's really more like on a case by case basis of the species right. than it is, than it should ever be like a blanket set statement on numbers. Um, yeah, for sure. It has to do with the slope of the animal. Yeah. Like, yep. Population. All right. We got two more. I want to play two more right. highs or lows. Let's do it. Yes, sir. Okay. Sea otter versus elephant seal huh. again cohabitate pacific northwest we have elephant seals sea otters cal's gonna pull up pictures they're great super cool animals you think there's a <laughs> million of them you really do both of them especially sea otters. <laughs> um yeah. but what do you think their populations are at mm -hmm. i mean i've seen a lot of sea otters i haven't seen a lot of elephant seals <laughs> it's always uh, the same picture of that same sea otter when we pull i know around. every picture <laughs> Um, I'm going to go sea otters. There's more of them. I'm going to say there's 1 million left. Wow. Wow. Uh, I'm going to have to, I'm still in the lead, I think. Right. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna I haven't have to, gotten any right. I'm going to have to agree <laughs> with Pat on this one then just because I feel like elephant seals, they're, they're bigger. And for some reason that makes me feel like there can't be as many, they take up too much space. Uh, I will generally go, that's generally that's true. Like because of humans, no other reason, but generally that's yeah. true. A million. You said Pat. Yeah. I already looked it up. I'm way off. Ah, shit. Well, don't <laughs> tell me that, but I, I am going to go under, uh, in, in this price is right strategy. I'll say 700,000. So sea otters keep in mind, were hunted to near extinction for their fur during like the gold rush era. Oh, Don't yeah. forget about that. We've talked about that and what it did to the California kelp forests. However, mm -hmm. their population has rebounded to a pretty healthy 106,000. Wow. Whereas elephant seals have a nice, robust, decently robust population of 170,000 individuals. Wow, close, close. Yeah. I've, I've yeah. never seen an elephant seal. I, I didn't even know they existed. A, that picture is the first time I've seen one. I, I was Dude, like, wow. Are you kidding me? You got it. it looks you got like it. A thumb. That's, that's, that's that's first of all that's a ridiculous statement secondly it's something that you should remedy immediately because all you have to do is take a nice drive up to hearst castle along the uh california one with your family and go and see okay. because they're incredible like your family will love it i was trying to find a picture of me standing next to one to show you oh yeah no this is good this is this is good advice just like uh you gave me i think in one of the bonus pods about how to cook fish this is i wrote it down i'm gonna write this down I'm Good. always looking for something to do with the kids and the family. I'm going to go see elephant seals with my newborn. And and, my and it's a it's a wife. winter activity, by the way. And I'm the only reason I'm staring at my phone is I was trying to find a picture to show They're you guys. I, I, huge, I, don't, I don't think people understand the scale of how big these things are. 13 um, feet long for the wow. males. Almost 5,000 pounds. They're yeah. huge. They're right here you, in California, too. Kyle's Kyle's going to pull up this picture. I just texted him once he madly scrambles between his phone and computer and everything else. But um, no. So here's what you do, Peter. I'll, I'll, I'll give you. You ready for it? You might yeah. Wanna, might want to write writing. this down. All right. So you pack you pack the family up on a Thursday afternoon. OK, okay hold on. Pack family up Thursday. You, it, maybe don't Thursday? need to go that far. Be drive, <laughs> drive yourself to Pismo Beach, California. When you get to Pismo Beach, you're going to want to go to Splash Cafe and have Ooh. a giant Kyle, Kyle while you're scrambling also pull these pictures up good luck uh you're gonna want to go to Pismo Beach and you're gonna want to stop at Splash Cafe for a bread bowl of clam chowder okay Ooh, this is what you're doing with the family. good it's we the did that in Seattle chowder. remember Pat oh god yes, yes. yes. it's good it's gonna hurt the tum tum but it is gonna be very <laughs> worth it every okay. bite you get an entire loaf of San Luis sourdough you know that good sourdough that we only get in here in SoCal you get an entire loaf of San Luis sourdough carved out, filled with the creamiest, most decadent clam chowder I, on the I might West go Coast. today. I may go then, today. Then, sir, you're going to go from Pismo Beach. You're going to take the one, okay? Don't take the 101. You're not going to San right. Francisco. When you hit yep. San Luis Obispo, you're going to turn left, and you're going to go on the one, okay? Right, Forget right. about Morro Bay, okay? If you're from Morro Bay, I'm sorry. Forget about Morro Bay. Nothing good takes place in Morro Bay. I love Morro Bay. 
Swing into Cayucas, California. Okay? <laughs> Cayucas, Cayucas, California. Yep. Once K- you hit Cayucas, C A Y U C O S. Once you hit Cayucas, you're going to want to take a okay. quick stop at the uh, the Brown Butter Bakery, I believe it's called. Ooh. And ha- get yourself get yourself a Huckleberry Pie. Okay? This is fantastic. Uh, yeah, Huckleberry okay. Pie. Legit. Lots of whipped cream. Across the street is the Smoked Fish Store, in case you're still uh, looking for a, a little nibbler. Get yourself some Smoked <laughs> Fish for the road, okay? From there, right. you're going to continue along the one. You're going to stop multiple times to take in the incredible sights between Cayucas, California, and San Simeon, California. Maybe maybe a nice wine tasting in Cambria, maybe not. But you're going to take in the sights. You're going to see how incredibly beautiful the, the Central California coast is. You're gonna mm-hmm, hit mm-hmm. the you're gonna hit the the forest, the redwoods, that area, and okay. then you're gonna get to a turnout that I'm not gonna share with the Brosners, and oh, wow. uh, I'm gonna send you a pin. And when you get to that wow. turnout, is... you're gonna walk down the dirt trail with your family, with your small child, children, and your wife. You're gonna go south along the beach. Once you've gone south along the beach about 150 yards, you're gonna stop and see an enormous beach sausage that looks like this photo that Cal's <laughs> gonna pull up right now. Okay, oh, and that, my God. sir is an elephant seal and you're going to be able to sit on the beach right on that little little dune that's behind my buttocks there and yep. see these unbelievable creatures in in February or March of of the yeah. this coming year and that's you're going to watch these things spar, fight with each other, mate, make crazy noises. Your kids are going to love it. I'm... Then you're going to continue on to Ragged Point in Big Sur. Spend the night up at Ragged Point. You're actually writing this down, which is phenomenal. Spend the uh, no- night at Ragged Point. Kyle, pull up Ragged Point, big sir. You're going to spend the night in an over over the Vista bungalow in Ragged Point, about 160 bucks. Won't break the bank. Oh, beautiful. Maybe two nights. Hang out in the pool. Go for a walk. Hit Julia Pfeiffer Falls at the state park. Wow. Then you're going to head back down the coast and go home. That's a perfect weekend right there. I mean, this is literally like I, I'm I'm drooling. I'm salivating right now. <laughs> and I swear to God, I'm doing this in March. Probably you must. Your family That's will love amazing. you. Your wife will think it's incredible. You'll see one of the biggest marine mammals uh, in California. <laughs> Peter just sent it in the group chat to everybody. Pe- His notes. Uh, Kyle, make sure we put brown, this, brown put this in the description of the. Uh, this is big. This is big information. I think people will really like it. And it's but that stunning. that point that that pinpoint is the true key to this. And uh, yes, I'll it share is. It. It's San Simeon, California. For those that oh, I forgot. I forgot. Sorry, I forgot one thing. I don't mean to oh, keep shooting your travel guide here. But no, after you stopped. And Kyle, pull this picture up too, please. After you've stopped to enjoy the elephant seals, you're going to take your family on a lovely walking tour of Hearst Castle, H-E-A-R-S-T, Castle. Then you're going to continue on to Ragged Point, maybe on the way back down, because you've done a lot of activities. Um, Yeah, I mean, well, mostly you've been eating on the way up. Yeah, yeah, you're fat now. (laughs) Um, But you're going to have a nice tour of Hearst Castle, which is also a delight. There's there's zebras walking around, maybe some spots, giraffe, you never know. Plus this amazing castle. Yeah, you won't regret it. That's a really nice no. weekend. This is, I mean, I'm like getting excited and it's just unfortunate because, you know, my wife's 20 weeks, 20, 20 months pregnant. Okay. She's about to have a kid. I'll have nothing to do. This is the most exciting visualization of something I've had in my head for a while. Put it on the calendar We're gonna do for it, though. March. We're going to do it. Your family's going to love you. The whole trip's going to cost you like 400 bucks in gas and accommodations and everything. Maybe an extra hundred in Huckleberry Pies. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a it's a very worthwhile weekend. Your, your family's going to think you're a wonderful man for it. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I love I like it. it. I love it. All right. Last one. Ready? Here we go. We, we oh, digress. Shit, we're still last one. highs or lows. We have <laughs> yeah. red panda versus the cheetah, the adorable red panda <clears throat> from the highs of the Himalayas or the zippy cheetah, which would be the wings on my sevens rugby team. Who you taking? Who's got the higher population in the wild? God damn, that thing's cute. Yeah, it is. It's got to be Red Panda, right? Does it? Uh, I'm going to go 11,000 Red Panda. I'm going to go, God, for some reason I have in my head that cheetahs are endangered, but I'm going to go cheetahs anyways, and I'll just say 11,000 and one. Good good guesses. (laughs) That's how they write it out. They they, they add the and one. Um, All right, so... (laughs) Uh, as your guesses, as I think we've talked about before, cheetahs had some terrible diseases and got hammered and their population came really, really close to extinction. They had a big genetic bottlenecking. However, they've bounced back to a 
relatively healthy, but still in pretty rough uh, situation. 7,000 individuals in the wild. Whereas the red panda has a population of 10,000 individuals in the wild. Uh, Wow. Okay. So close, but low. Lowest on our list. No, not lowest on our list. Uh, let's see. Let me pull the list back up. Yes. Lowest on the list is the cheetah at 7,000. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wow. That is, that is, uh, that was a learning experience. The game and the, uh, tour guide, the travel advice. Yeah. It it Um, might be the best game we ever played. (laughs) (laughs) Crazy. By the way, just on the cheetahs, they were estimated to be at a hundred thousand a hundred years ago. And now they're down to 7,100. Wow. So brutal. Yeah, so was that was a, I mean, it sounds like a lot of that was the disease, right? As opposed Correct. to, I'm Correct. sure a lot of if, habitat loss as well. If, if, if you're looking, I mean, habitat loss is the big reason because there's nowhere for them to go. But what is it? Um, let me look it up quickly. It's uh, here it is. Systemic amyloid ambulosis, I think is the mm. disease that they got. And it was, it just, it just ran through cheetahs. I think, is that the right one? Um, it's a neurological disorder, I believe. And I, I, I might have to do a little more reading than five seconds, but it, uh, it basically just ran through them. I think it came from domestic dogs, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? And, okay. uh, it's our fault. We fucked it up. Yeah, yeah of, of course. course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, myelopathy, Kyle says, maybe that was what it is in cheetahs is a distinct neurological disorder characterized by degenerative lesions. Yeah, this is a lesions of the spinal cord causing ataxia and paresis, which I don't know. Oh, God, pain, just sounds like a, that's sounds, like, yeah, sounds painful. Sounds like a bad yeah. time. Sounds awful. Probably <clears throat> affects memory. Neural just fuck off. Um, can we do one more thing? One more segment? I think we of should. Please. Cause Please it's good. Yeah. at least one more, maybe we've five. got an animal mystery. Ooh. Yeah, let's do it. We need to solve it. <laughs> this We're takes place. Case. This story takes place in Texas. Okay. Never heard of it. Uh, uh, in <laughs> Hill Country Village, Texas, specifically. Okay. Um, Hill Country. This is a suburban neighborhood. It takes place in a woman's backyard. It's midday. She sees an animal walking through her yard. Doesn't know what it is. Doesn't look like anything she's seen before. It stops. It eats some berries off of a berry bush. Berries. Yeah. It's a ve- it's a vegetarian or an omnivore. And, and and then it sort of disappears into the into the wooded area behind her house. Okay. So first thoughts here about this berry eating strange <laughs> animal in the suburbs of Texas. It's a deer. It's in the suburbs. It walks up. Oh, but she doesn't know what it is. So it's not just a she common deer. It it's yeah, 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 yeah. That's dumb. Uh, it is a mangy. No. Yeah, it's a mangy fox. It's a mangy fox. Okay. Okay. All right. I mean, re- let's remember that Texas is the home of the most reported mm. chupacabra sightings, and and, and, and are- where the most eccentric weirdos have like big animals in their backyards coming from. But me. true. I, but a, a chupacabra is not eating berries, mate. Come on. No, right. Because <laughs> no. they suck the, the blood of goats. That's yes. right. All right. The goat uh, sucker. Let me, but it could be. It could be. I'm going to give you one more piece of information before okay. we uh, show the photo. Ooh, yep. we got a photo. So, um, someone from one zoo who weighed in, a zoologist, if you will, said, <laughs> I will. um, that it is very likely an American badger. Mm. Well, okay. another zoologist said he believes it is a uh, a dog coyote hybrid. Koi dog. Huh. Pretty pretty different takes there though. Very. Those two things are not similar. Let's take a look at this photo. Let's see if we can. Yeah, let's pull up the photo. Yeah. Zoom in, please. Mm. Wow, that's that's it, huh? That's it's pretty ugly. It's it's very. Uh, yeah, it looks just like so weathered. If, first of all, Hard I years. don't know who said it's a badger, but it's definitely not a badger. So, Kyle, <laughs> pull up a picture like of an American badger. badger, please. I mean, there's nothing there badger-esque at all. It was a zoologist. Um, well, he needs prescription glasses. Um, <laughs> but that uh, that there's your American badger. The legs are wrong. The body shape is wrong. Yeah. That ain't it. 
There's, um, the, there's a missing tail though. The, the the mystery picture looks like it doesn't have a tail. Am I, or am I seeing? I that see wrong? the tail. No, oh, you can is see it yeah, that little I, stumpy. I think it's there. I think it's yeah. hanging down there. Oh, um, okay, there it is. Yeah. Well, I know what I think it is, but I couldn't tell you exactly what it is. Um, I mean, it appears to have a tusk coming out of its mouth. There is <laughs> something going on in the front there. I don't know. If I bet just, that's got to be berry bush or what's yeah. happening over there. It looks um, like a dingo. So here's Kyle. Do me a favor. Open a new tab and type in uh, Belize pot liquor. I sure hope <laughs> porn doesn't come up. Um, <laughs> go to images. So these are these pups. Uh, man, they're very diverse. When we were in Belize, I almost brought one of these guys home because I loved him. But yeah, go to that guy. Go to the one with the big, big perky ears there on the left. Three yeah, down. So this is the a type of domestic dog. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's basically just a crazy mongrel. But um. They they have a lot of these. So what I'm seeing in that picture is just a real mixed up mutt, kind of like that pot liquor that's yeah riddled with mange, like lost yep. all his fur. I mean, just just looks her just riddled with mange. Like has those pox that sort of skin issue, no mm -hmm. fur. You can kind of see the testes in the back there under the tail, meaning it's a ah. male. Um, mm. yeah, I'm seeing like just a real mangy mongrel. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I got to agree. It, it looks like just a, 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 a kind of like a swollen dog of some type. <laughs> like it's look at look at how fat its limbs are. They're very thick and you can see all its wrinkles. It just looks like it's had some hard years out there in the wild. Some hard years. Are you buying the koi, the koi dog? I don't really I don't see the coyote. So. Yeah. I don't see any coyote and it's stocky. You know, the coyotes always have that lean, like the belly goes concave, you know, like that mm -hmm. lean mm. agile, like the way a greyhound or a whippet or something has that, that look, or even a German shepherd. This is much more square bodied. I'm, I'm just seeing a real mangy street dog basically. Yeah. Yeah. That is what it looks like. Why he would be eating berries. I don't know. That's pretty odd, but I guess if he's, mangy and just desperate you know whatever he whatever looks pretty well fed though honestly it looks it doesn't look like emaciated or anything which is interesting. true but he's trash definitely yeah. not in good shape yeah also no, no. have you have you been to texas like they're skinny don't <laughs> exist okay so uh <laughs> everything's bigger there <laughs> everything's bigger in texas even their even their even their dying street dogs um <laughs> that's what i'm calling it what uh what do you guys think oh dog. i mean yeah dog yeah, I got to agree. It's 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 definitely a canine. Like it's a dog. There's no way that it's a uh, badger. That was ludicrous. Yeah, that was um, a, that was a poor, poor call. I gotta, you All know, right. it, good mystery. Yeah. Mystery solved. We found a street dog. There is no answer to this though. The, Correct. The, it's just a straight up mystery. Okay. Uh, well, well, I don't weigh know. in, That's Brosner's bad. weigh in. What do you think in the comments? Would love to hear your thoughts. Always love to read those and. Uh, get a sense of what's going on in the community when it comes to these animal mysteries. Good. All right, guys. Well, I think this is good. This is useful. We've learned a lot. We've played some games. We've, uh, we've learned about animal populations and some rugby. I don't know what else we talked about, but some other good stuff. And, uh, so here's the thing. Let's just circle back to rugby. Cause we didn't figure out what our bet is. Okay. I think at five to one, Ireland feels like the bet. Because it's it's paying five to one versus Clownish. South nope. Africa, you're only getting two point five to one. Well, I wish I'd bet when you first told me those stats where they were like fourth ranking to win. Um, yeah. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why it's clownish here. And I'll, I'll put money on South Africa. I'll go out right now. I'll put a hundred dollars, two hundred bucks <laughs> on South Africa. Always, it doesn't uh, matter what the game. Here's why: because Ireland is ranked number one in the world because of how many Northern Hemisphere rugby teams they beat to get there. And don't get me wrong, they're looking good. They're looking hard. They're looking bullish. They got great players, big freaking forwards. But, but, <coughs> they're Northern Hemisphere teams, okay? That's like, that's like being the You're hardest You're a hemispherist. Kid. I am. That's yeah. like being the that's like being the hardest marshmallow at the marshmallow factory. Okay, like you're still not that hard. Okay, and now when you're, you're no competing, stay puffed. and I'll and I'll tell you why. I'll, I can even bring it back to a whole theory I have behind rugby and who's going to win and why, and it has nothing to do with the athletes, um, which is really advanced theory thinking here. Now, very strange. No, oh, oh, I got a whole thing on it. Now they're not going to win because they're not as hard as South Africa. South Africa mm -hmm. has nothing to lose and everything to gain. They've got to prove it. 
They want it more than anybody. Their country is in shambles. There is load shedding. There is murder. I mean, life is rough if you live in South Africa. Life is not that rough if you live in Ireland. They don't need it like South Africa needs it. When South Africa won the last World Cup four years ago, it literally changed the entire atmosphere of the country because of how hmm. impactful it was. Because it's the biggest thing by a landslide in South Africa is the sport of rugby. And it changed the entire outlook of the country and made them forget for four years that their country ships more coal than anywhere else basically on the planet. And yet they still don't have any power that their whole natural resources are being destroyed, that the murder rates unbelievable, that there's no electricity. I mean, it's just like, it, it means something to South Africans and it means something to see a Khaleesi who's step the captain of the spring box, who's stepping on that field, who's representing his country for so much more than a sports game. And they are hard fucking people. All those boys on that South Africa team either come from like slums or farms or, you know, like rough, rough neighborhoods and schools. You're talking about mm -hmm. a bunch of Irish. I mean, come on. All they do is drink Guinness and sit around like they, 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 they <laughs> oh can't fucking God. nah. they got nothing. They got nothing. No, I, it, it is. I, I do like what you're doing here. And I think you're right. It, it, it does. We always forget to to put ourselves in the shoes of whatever we're trying to figure out. And that motivation that they have, you're probably right. I mean. I'm watching a 90 day fiance where they're in South Africa. It is terrible there from what I see on this 90 day <laughs> reality show. So these guys definitely got something to prove. It sounds like, and I, I'm going to go out and bet. I, is there any, bet. now any way I could, I mean, I'm liking Tonga at 500 to one. Any chance they pull it out? No. Tonga. No. F F Fiji's got a better odd of winning than Tonga. Um, of those three, one. so Fiji, Samoa, and Tonga are always the Pacific Island nations. Here's the thing. They're the most fun teams to watch. There's no question about it. They do all this fancy yeah. stuff. They play a game of rugby that is like this fast, dynamic, like break all the rules. Like they'll just like throw the ball over their heads at each other and like catch <laughs> it out of the air with one finger and like alley-oop it and do all this nonsense shit that's super fun to watch. But as soon as the pressure really, really gets applied, because they're all such incredible individual athletes, they don't come together as a team the way that they need to. And it's, uh, you know, the, you see it because like they'll, they'll beat any, they'll beat any team in the USA, most European teams, whatever, any day of the week, because they have 15 unbelievable athletes on, on the field that are just like dynamic and can do crazy shit that nobody else can do. But as soon as the pressure gets super, super hard, they all go into this mode of I'm going to win the game for the team and they lose the teamness of it. And that, that has mm. them fall apart. And I've seen it every major game they play. And I'm not saying they're not incredible teams. They are, but they just don't have that team unity. I mean, those South African boys, like they live together, they eat together, they drink together, they sleep together. All they do is rugby 24 hours a day. They don't do anything else. And uh, you know, all the Samoans and Tongans and Fijians. And part of this is the sad reality of the economies of these countries we're talking about. They're like school teachers, doctors, construction workers. Like they're busy at their nine to five the rest of the time sure. and then come together to play rugby. And yeah. you just, that's really hard to make that into the world winning team, you know? Yeah. Well, I also just looked back at the history of the event since 1987. There's only like six teams that have ever even been in the finals. Oh, Correct. really? It's England, yeah. Australia, France, New Zealand, South Africa, and Wales wow. once, I think, right? You named them. Uh, da, 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 da. No, it's literally five. France, England, New Zealand, okay. South Africa, Australia. Yep. That's, That's it. it. Well, I think we need yep. to get a rugby podcast going on the network here for us. Uh, you've gotten me excited <laughs> about some a sport I've never even watched. And oh, <laughs> you, you watch it for 15 minutes and you're going to be hooked. It's on Peacock, by the way. So for, if you're listening okay. to this, Brosners, it's $6 for a Peacock subscription. And they've got every game on there. So go go download the Peacock app, throw on a rugby game. It's it's tremendous. It's probably free for a month or at least seven days, too. So do it. Yeah, exactly. Probably. Um, uh, my money's my money's you've convinced me. hundred bucks on South Africa to win two seventy five. Put it in do the it. books. Well, I, listen, I wish I, I convinced you two weeks ago when we first started talking and their odds were so much. Lower it was like four hundred. Yeah, I, I <laughs> didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, anyway, it's good. I'd like to Let's see how many, Brosners, how many Brosners love rugby as much as Forrest. So if you're interested, comment down there <clears throat> who you think's going to win and why. Send us a you video. Just, I mean, if you get you excited, see as the excited athleticism as Forrest. 
of these guys and like the the level like some of these things like when you when you're bored we won't do it on the pod but just if you're listening to this and you got another 10 minutes just type in Fof de Clerk Giant Slayer and watch a guy who <laughs> who's five foot seven beat the shit out of like eight guys that are bigger than uh Gronk or you know like some of the biggest guys in the NFL and he's like five foot seven 140 pounds and he beats the Jesus out of these guys and uh, it's just it's rugby is a game of all heart like don't get me wrong. You have to be a great athlete, but it's all in your head and your heart. It doesn't exist anywhere else. If you're willing to, to do stupid things and give a hundred percent, like you watch these little fucking guys like Cheslin Colby or Faf de Klerk beat the shit out of guys that are five foot nine, seven foot, 300 pounds of raw muscle. And it's just because they're just, their screws are loose and they're just like, <laughs> let's go. They're just looking for it. It's phenomenal to watch. Well, if Forrest on Sunday, you decide you want to bet a little bit on South Africa's match against Romania. And you want to bet on South Africa to beat Romania, your hundred dollar bet yeah. will pay you 10 cents. That is yeah, the actual exactly. math. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine being Romania, who it's your first time in the rugby world cup. And in your first pool play match, you have to face the number one world champion, South Africa. <laughs> How brutal is that? <laughs> yeah, it sounds there's something wrong there. You gotta, you gotta just, give those guys a chance. It's random. It's random draw, but it's just it's pretty brutal to be in that. So wait, real, real <laughs> quick. How do the points work? Because you, if you want to just bet even money, you have to on South Africa, you have to spot uh, Romania 69 points. Oh, uh, that's confusing. So the points work like this. I was just texting it to a buddy so that he understood it uh, here. I wrote it all out. <laughs> uh, so the point allocation in pool stages, four points are awarded for a win. Two points are awarded for a draw. A try bonus point is awarded to teams that score four or more tries in a match. So you get a bonus point. A try is a touchdown, by the way. So you get four, you get, uh, yeah, four or more tries and you get a bonus point. And a losing bonus point is awarded to teams that lose a match by seven or fewer points. So it's, it's pretty fucking complicated. Yeah. It's, okay. I'm right. sure yeah. it works out though. Make, to make it, the it does. It, it makes sense it when you're watching. That's, that's exactly what it is. Just, just watch yeah. a game. Like it's so much fun to watch. You to. watch these big, crazy athletes go a hundred percent speed at each other for 80 minutes. There's no stopping down. Like in football, there's no pads or helmets. There was a clash in the uh, England Argentina game. Maybe Kyle can pull it up where these two guys go up to go for the ball. And at full speed sprints from across the field, they both go up and just go head to head and just Jesus. explode each other's heads. They both had like 12 oh stitches in their forehead. Don't, don't and this is in this is in like <laughs> minute two of the of the game. And you're just like, yeah, I'm in for it. Like it's so and they much just more continue exciting. Playing. Of course, yeah. yeah. And that's the difference between rugby and like anything else. They go off and they're just fucking wrapping tape around their head till they look like the, you know, one of those <laughs> Middle Eastern things on their head the turban and then they're and then they're back on the field you know and that's it like just straight into it like there's no way they're coming off the field on a game like that it's just so much fun to watch i'm sold i'm gonna watch i'm gonna bet uh and you know that'll be it i'll let you guys know what i do i think we lost every brosner this is like an american-based podcast there's like well, four do people it. that like rugby but i don't care it's worth yeah. it. if they go are still it. listening what should they say for us what should they comment if they are still listening uh go bucky spring box G O B O K K E. Go Bucky. Go. If you oh made God. it this far in the podcast. Oh, wait, we usually do that after you have to do the thing and I'll say it. All right. Do I'll the do the thing. thing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, go to the wild times. Dot club. Wild times. Dot club. I'm sorry. No, the wild times. Dot club forward slash <laughs> info for all the links. And don't forget. We do six podcasts a month. Two of them are public for your viewing enjoyment. All free. Uh, the other four bonus pods. You go to Spotify. You sign up. You get everything ad free uh, and you get six podcasts a month on Spotify. Just just go do it. It's great. We, we talk a lot of shit. We swear it gets pretty uh, just down, raw, visceral. We swear. As a <laughs> People hate it when point. I say it, but it's the Cinemax of podcasts. F who you hates don't it? like it. Nobody. I don't know. It. Somebody's bullshit. somebody literally keeps commenting. Take that out because it's in our like midway ad. No, don't, don't say the Cinemax of podcasts. It's so lame. You're such a douchebag. Yeah. I know. Nice. I know I am. Thank you. Right. Good night, everybody. Wildtimes.club forward slash info. Go, Bucky. Let's go. Go, Bucky. Good night.